It houses more than 200 individual nuclear facilities and the largest stock of untreated nuclear waste on Earth. The scale of this place is incredible. There's 10 or 11,000 people working here. It has its own transport system, roads, buses. During the Second World War, they built an explosives factory here. Then it became Windscale, where plutonium was produced for nuclear weapons, and nearby the site of the world's first proper commercial nuclear power station. In 1957, fire swept through Windscale, and terrible disaster was only narrowly averted. Some scientists believe much of northern England could have become a nuclear wasteland. It's still one of the worst nuclear accidents ever. Renamed Sellafield, the site became a global center for reprocessing or recycling spent nuclear fuel. All that has now stopped. They no longer generate any electricity here. All that's happening is a colossally expensive cleanup. So I'm now heading inside to what's been described as the most hazardous industrial site in Western Europe. The complex is now a jumble of aging buildings chock-a-block with all sorts of nuclear waste. This is now the site of the biggest decommissioning process in history. Where I am at the moment, I'm in a C0 zone, which means a very low level risk of potential contamination. And when we go down through there, we'll be going into a C1 zone. Beyond that, there's a C2 zone. And then there's a C3 zone further inside where there is the highest risk of potential contamination. And to enter this area, I had to completely change everything down to the underwear. So I have to put this, what's called a decimeter, it measures my exposure to radiation. And I need to put that close to my heart. All right. The Sellafield cleanup is expected to take 100 years and cost the country almost 100 billion pounds. It's a staggeringly complex task. Few of the facilities here were built with decommissioning in mind, and some nuclear materials could be radioactive for another 100,000 years. Dorothy Graddon is the nuclear engineer in charge of decommissioning Sellafield's most hazardous site. Bloody hell. Are you all right with heights? I'm all right with heights. OK. Uh, pretty much. It's not the heights, it's the... What you're seeing. I've seen this described as the most hazardous industrial site in Western Europe. Is that something you would agree with? I would. What is in there? It is nuclear material. It is safely stored underwater. There is material left in here that couldn't be reprocessed for technical reasons. This is basically a giant swimming pool into which highly radioactive material was dumped decades ago into what's now more than 1,000 skips, often without leaving proper records. We've had to put chemical treatment in. This improves the visibility. It's really important that we understand where all of our containers are and then what's in them. Are you saying you, we don't know exactly what's in this pond? Back in the early 90s, we didn't have a good idea as to what was here. Now we've done surveys with our remote operated vehicles and we now have a record of, of all the material. We have a significant amount of nuclear material stored in ageing facilities and our job is to understand what we have, to recover it and to put it into modern storage and safe storage on some of our newer facilities on site and we need to do that in a timely fashion. Dorothy leads hundreds of staff working to decommission the pond, full of the most lethal material imaginable, still corroding and decaying. It's just one of the cleanup sites at Sellafield. So in this area, and uh, we don't linger long here, so this is where we are uh, sorting some of our fuel skips and consolidating them. So you can hear that your radiation detectors are chirping a little bit faster. We do have a more consolidated area of fuel here, which obviously has higher radiation, so we, we move on. Water shields most radiation, but the pond's above ground with an aging concrete wall, and it's open to the elements and corrosive salty sea air. If the water leaked, some have worried nuclear fuel inside could burn. 
It can't stay like this. So where I'm going now, as far as we know, TV cameras have never been. I was heading into restricted areas of the Magnot storage plant, where engineers are carrying out the slow, painstaking task of actually removing the radioactive material. What's that noise for? It's a, what's called a reassurance monitor. So these measure radiation in the buildings, so right. it tells us all the time that the systems are working. OK, almost like a heartbeat. Correct. What's going on there, Dorothy? And what we're doing now is creating a, a new tent so we can bring some of the material out, put it into the tent to understand the material characterisation. Look at this. Do not loiter in this area as elevated levels of radiation exist around the balustrade. Please don't lean on the handrails here because and we certainly don't want anything dropped in the pond here. But this is the pond? Correct. Just in there is, your, is the radioactive material you've got to clean up? Correct. Am I right in thinking, therefore, if you drop anything over there... It's in there. ..it becomes radioactive waste? It would become radioactive waste. That is astonishing. The state of the site you've got here, I mean, it's very rusty, it's crumbling. This wall here, God, this is where... The fuel would have come into here and been dismantled, taken apart, ready to go for reprocessing. So fuel from the nuclear reactors has been placed in here and is still in there? And there is st still some in there, yes. So this is a future cleanup. Yes. That sound gives me the goosebumps. And so it should. This is a scary place, but it is also a phenomenal national endeavour to clear up the problems and mistakes of the past. The water seemed to have its own sinister glow. Dorothy thinks it could take another 10 years to clear the pond, but her team are actually ahead of schedule. I went to meet the specialists operating the robot submersibles. Jack and Liam. Jack and Liam, this is Simon. And who's who? Who's Jack and who's Liam? Uh, I'm Liam. You're Liam, you're Jack. And what on earth are you doing? Just get rid of... Uh... Any debris off you'll be fine on the pond floor. What an extraordinary job you're doing. You look as though you're operating on the surface of Mars. The nearest thing you can think of is one of those fairground games <laughs> when you go to I know get exactly the teddy. What you mean. So uh, you unfortunately think? they're not recovering um, soft toys. How old are you, Liam? Uh, I'm 23. 23. Jack, how old are you, mate? 24. Are you both big gamers? Like, it's the question you get asked a lot, like, is it just like playing video games? It's, in a sense, you can kind of say, yeah, but it has real-life consequences. So you see the fundamental difference between yeah. the two. I mean, how can you not? Look at what's in that skip. On the screen here, are those actually fuel rods, nuclear yeah. fuel rods? Yeah. These guys are proper on the front line here, in, in a sense, aren't they? Well, they're not just in a sense, they absolutely are on the front line. And these are the future of the industry. My sense is you don't want the, this legacy to con almost contaminate, frankly, our view of nuclear now. So I fundamentally believe nuclear's got a part to play in our balanced energy policy. The country did not understand, the world did not understand nuclear and radiation when we built these first facilities. And this is the consequences? And this is some of the consequences of it. Liam and Jack sorting it out? Absolutely. When we embarked on nuclear energy in the 1950s, it offered a glimpse of a utopian future. Some thought it would even gift us free power. But as pioneers in the industry, we didn't understand the true costs. And as a nation, we're now paying the price. Goodness me. Sellafield no longer generates any power. Yet clearing up the past means it's likely it will still be a major employer in Cumbria 100 years from now. Um, Despite mishaps, accidents, disasters and sky-high costs, it seems the story of nuclear power is far from over. Yeah, that's it. Because modern nuclear power is fairly reliable, fairly safe and, crucially, low carbon. Some think it is part of the solution to climate change, even though wind and solar power are a fraction of the price. Modern nuclear power stations are hugely expensive, but sensibly they're designed with decommissioning in mind. 
That's a relief. Dorothy took me to a bunker-like warehouse containing 120 enormous concrete cubes, each weighing around 50 tonnes, and each holding the lethal remains of an entire nuclear reactor that was cut up in the 1980s. They're stored under the watchful eye of Head of Operations Richard Edmondson. They've still got radioactive symbols on them. Yes. The contents of some are ferociously radioactive, is that right? Yes. The levels of radiation at the time could have been up to 100 sieverts. And what that means, you could kill a man 10 times over with 100 sieverts. It will decay over time. Some has decayed quite quickly over five, six, 10 years. Some materials in there may take thousands of years to decay. Which are which? Do we know, or has it all been pretty much put in together? Yeah, it's, we've, we've got records of each box, every item that went in, the radiation off each item. The guys who came up with the records thought of when the records would need to be read and deliberately didn't record them on any technology of the day. So there were no floppy disks or, or, or anything like that, or, or tapes. Um, it's recorded on a special paper that can be read for hundreds of years and stored in um, special, special bags that have got copper, copper lined bags, so that we, we don't know what we're going to read in 200 years' time. We don't know how we're going to read it in 200 years' time, but we've got it in special paper that you will be able to read. What a message to the future that is. I found this place horrifying and astonishing. There is some really heroic work being done here to clean up our national problems. Nuclear power has got lots of advantages. It doesn't emit vast quantities of carbon pollution. But if Sellafield's anything, it is surely evidence of the astonishingly long-term costs of nuclear power as well. The UK has enough nuclear waste to fill a shopping bag for every single person in the country. Many experts conclude the only long-term solution for dealing with our nuclear waste is to bury it deep underground in what's called a geological waste facility, possibly in Cumbria. Building that facility will be an enormous engineering feat that could be as expensive as the Channel Tunnel. I was missing the National Park. It was bizarre how I could drive just a few miles from the toxic shell of Sellafield and find myself back inside the Lake District. <laughs> 